In this video tutorial, we will build a decision flowchart. It guides us through the available options to choose a healthcare professional. Instead of listing contact data for all its healthcare providers, a modern hospital has decided to use a dynamic flowchart. At each step, the patient chooses among several available options and the available professionals are listed at the end. Let's look at the project folder where we build our hospital guidance application. In a folder called Images, we keep all images of the healthcare professionals. We also have a data.js file, which is a JSON file. In it, we have data for 1,000 healthcare workers. Name, specialty, time frame for a prospective appointment, state, and more. The other files are two TypeScript files that contain the definitions of the diagramming and common API that are included in the flowchart library. We don't need the TypeScript files for the application, but they provide IntelliSense support in VS Code during the development. The two JavaScript files that are into our directory, common and diagramming, are part of the flowchart library. Our application will use them. We add references to those two files at the end of the blank HTML file that will host our application. We also add reference to the file with JSON data and a reference to a code behind file. This file is called Hospital Appointments and is empty for now. We create three Canvas instances. We need them for the overview, diagram, and zoom control of the flowchart library. The first canvas will be used as an overview control. This is a control that provides a miniature version of the diagram. The next canvas is the diagram. It has quite large size as you see. The last one is for the zoom and pan control, which allows the user to bring quickly any portion of a large diagram into view. Now we start writing the JavaScript code for our application. We add references to the TypeScript files and we declare some namespace mappings. It is easier to read the code when we don't have access members of the Diagram API with long prefixes and references. We also declare a global variable, Diagram, which will represent our Diagram control. We handle the DOM content loaded event of document to create the instance of the Diagram control there. We use a reference to its canvas, which we identified through its ID. We set the virtual scroll property to true, which allows us to render even large diagrams into small canvases like those on a mobile phone. Now if we refresh the web page, we can start drawing diagram modes. With the little effort we've given ourselves so far, we have a web page with working diagramming capabilities. Now we will create the overview and zoom controls, which use their Canvas instances the way the diagram library does. Our web page already shows them. The overview allows you to see a mini version of the diagram, which you can quickly navigate. The zoom lets you change the zoom factor and pan the diagram. Now we add a string with HTML code that describes a default node in our decision diagram. It consists of text and a select box. We set it as a default template in the diagram, which means when control nodes are created, they will use this template. Now we add a string with HTML code that describes a default node in our decision diagram. It consists of text and a select box. We set it as a default template in the diagram, which means when control nodes are created, they will use this template. Now if we start drawing new nodes, they still do not show the template. That is because we need to change the behavior of the diagram. We set the behavior to be link controls and here it is. When we create nodes, they render with the select box in them.
Let's add some styling to our control nodes. They look quite ugly this way. We can style the HTML controls through CSS the way we style a web page. The style for the control node is called MF Diagram Control Node Content, and there we place the visual settings for the nodes. The nodes now are rendered in light blue with centered content and look much better. Let's create our first node that will be the root of the decision tree. The node lists all available states, where the hospital chain has hospitals. Note the data attribute in the code for the select element. The data attribute is a prefix that tells the control that HTML attributes follow. In this case, we have the interactive attribute, which indicates the control responds to user actions. The next is event change, which indicates that we will handle the change event of the select control. We handle it with the select click method. In the event handler, we get rid of the ID of the select that triggered the change. This is done by calling get content of the sender. The sender is the control node where the select was placed. The content is the HTML node that is rendered by this node. Once we get a reference to the select element, we check if its ID is states, and if yes, we create the appropriate next control node in the decision tree. The next node method is the one that creates the next node. It gets as parameters the stage of the decision tree and the previous node. At stage 1, we create a new control node for the healthcare specialty that the patient is interested in. We will make the link between the two stages animated. In the create animated link method, we get as parameters the two nodes, which will be connected through animated link. We create the link with a triangle shape and blue brush and stroke. We add the newly created link to the collection of diagram items. Then we create an animation that spans from the start to the end point of the link. We specify the easing type of the animation, the animation type, the duration, and an update callback method. We also add an event listener for the animation complete event. Initially, the next diagram node is invisible, so when the animation ends, we make the node show. In the update callback, we get the end point of the link according to the animation progress. This gives us animated drawing of the link. If we refresh the page, we should be able to see the animation. Here it is. Once we select a value, the change event is triggered, the animation starts, and the link is rendered. When the animation is finished, the next node becomes visible. Let's add now code for the other stages at the decision tree. We need to check if the change in the select control was triggered by another control and call again the method that creates the next decision node. The cases for the nodes at levels 2, 3, or 4 are identical. We create new control nodes and add select controls with different options. We just need to change the location of those nodes so we can place them under each other. Here is the tree so far. We are left with the last level of nodes. For it to work, 
we need to filter the professionals in the JSON list based on the criteria that the user has specified so far. We first get the selected value in the state's combo box and filter the available professionals according to the state. Then we filter the already filtered list according to specialty. We go on until the list is filtered according to the values on all levels in the decision tree. At every lever where we get an empty list after filtering, we change the message so that the user gets adequate information why there are no professionals available. At the end we need to check if we have an error message. If yes, we will render a single node that shows the error. If we have found doctors that correspond to the criteria provided by the user, we create new control node instances with a new template. In the template we have placed the contact data for the doctor in a table. Above the table is an image and their name. Since there could be numerous doctors, we will use the tree layout algorithm to arrange them rather than creating animations. We apply the algorithm and call the resize to fit items method of the diagram to make it large enough to fit all nodes. If we walk through the steps on choosing a professional in our tree, we can see the available doctors well arranged. Something is missing however. If we change the criteria on one of the tree levels, the whole tree needs to be reset. This is not done now and new nodes are rendered on top of the existing ones. Let's change that. We add a method that deletes the first node under the node with the changed select option. Then we need to go downwards and delete all its ancestor nodes. In the common scenario we might have lots of professionals listed, so we need to delete all nodes recursively. We cycle through all nodes until we reach the end of the tree. We need to call this method after a select value is changed. Let's see the result. Here it is. Once we change the option in a node, all nodes under it disappear. And that is everything for today. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.